Hey everybody, it's your boy, uh, Do It With Dan, and today we're gonna finish up the center console. Make sure you like and subscribe to Do It With Dan's YouTube channel. Bitch. All right, so we're back in the workshop and we're gonna finish up the center console in the dually today. The big thing I've been working on is the lid, and if you saw my last video about the lid in the center console, you know that I had gone through a couple of different attempts before I finally decided on what I wanted to make work. And that's this video. I would say all in all, due to epoxy curing and different woodworking things and taking orders and all this other stuff, building this lid and finishing up the center console took all of like probably a solid three months just for the lid. I've had a really weird mental block with this lid because I've just hadn't been able to come up with an idea until now that I was satiated with. And thankfully we found that. So the first thing I've done here is take a big sheet of MDF, one inch thick MDF, cut it to the dimensions of both the lids combined and I'm just gonna work with it as one big lid and go from there after I eat lunch of course So you see me putting a bunch of dots on the wood here. This was for an idea that I thought I was gonna go with, but after testing some stuff off camera, I decided that it wasn't worth it. Basically either like make or break it, then I'd have to restart all over. So I didn't wanna do that, and I was really happy to move on with my original idea. Right here, I'm using a six inch hole saw, and a link for everything that I use in this video will be in the description, you guys can check it out. But I have a very specific use for this big ass hole. A lot of people called it a toilet seat on Instagram, I thought that was funny. But yeah, I'm casting something in this hole, and we'll show you later. Now that everything's smooth and contoured, I do a little arm check to make sure it's comfortable, and then I'm gonna go ahead and separate it from the rest of the wood so we can work on these pieces individually. Alright, so the test fit, it fits great. Now all we need to do is come up with some hidden hinges. So I head over to the workshop, create some custom hinges, make a little animation in Photoshop to make sure I know what I'm looking for, make sure it works. So I couldn't find any references for long reach or hidden hinges, so I kind of just had to make one myself. I've never seen a hinge that works like this. They might exist, I don't know, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a do it with Dan only hinge. So after the plasma cutter cut it out nice and perfect like it does, time to mount it and test it. Look at that, perfect. Sharp clearance, it'll hide in the rear space to where you can't see it. The tricky part here was getting a hinge that both lifted and moved out of the way. So I had to find a good pivot point and also shape the hinge to where it wouldn't hit the rest of the center console box. I only had about an inch worth of a gap to work with, so this is what I came up with and I'm very happy with it. So it's time to make some of the accompanying hardware for the hinge so it can mount permanently on the underside of the lid. So it's back over to design another piece and then cut it out with a plasma cutter. And what I do a lot in my program, I design little notches in my design on either side so I know exactly where I'm gonna put my bed on both sides.
All right, now that the hinge is done, it's time to get dangerous. And I do mean freaking dangerous, dude. I have a lot of tools that I work with that make me uncomfortable, and this being my number one. Not only is my routing table and my router my most uncomfortable tool to use because I like my fingers, to get the roundover that I was looking for, I bought an inch and a half roundover bit. This thing is both massive and terrifying. It does not spin smoothly, it is not perfectly balanced, and it sticks out literally an inch and a half down. It's massive. I do not like using it. I don't think I'll ever use it for anything else ever again. My goal is to put this tool in my drawer and never look at it ever again fucking terrifying it did however get the exact results that i wanted while simultaneously covering my entire shop in sawdust i mean look how much mdf does i shouldn't even say sawdust this is mdf which is like the most dangerous thing for your lungs so you got to wear a respirator when doing this kind of shit it just slings the powdered mdf all over the place my shop is still covered i will never get all of this out but i cannot be upset at the results because the results turned out perfect way better than i could have expected hop back over to my computer, design a couple more brackets that I'm gonna mount the actual lid to the center console with. We'll cut those things out and bend them as well. So now the rear lid needs a hinge as well. And since this butts up to the rear firewall, or whatever you call that, cab wall, I guess, the hinge will be hidden regardless in between the seats, so you'll never see it. So it can be out in the open. And this is a very basic design. Two pieces of metal with holes so you can drill them and mount them, and tabs that are bent on either side. Look at this boring time lapse. What a perfect time for today's sponsor, CF Moto. Now, CF Moto makes high quality but super affordable side by sides, ATVs, and motorcycles. Now, their goal is to make the American dream way more affordable because, let's face it, the major manufacturers, they'll charge you an arm and a leg just to get into something basic. And I think we can all agree that we shouldn't be paying this much for leisure vehicles. Now, obviously, they do make side by sides and ATVs, but today we're going to be focusing much more on their motorcycles. Now, they offer a wide variety of street, sport, and adventure motorcycles with tons of tech. They're all performance-based, they have ABS, and they have over 500 dealers in the U.S., which means that their customer service is top tier. And since 1989, they've been a major supplier and manufacturer for the major names in motorsports. But now they make full machines. You can't forget about the CF Moto app, which gives you a ton of data about your rides and your bike, which you can connect to and learn all sorts of things that you wish you knew. Don't take my word for it. Check them out. Their link's in the description. I want to say thank you, CF Moto, for sponsoring another video. I look forward to working with you guys some more, and let's get back to the video. All right, this is important to me. I want to show this here. I'm drilling into the MDF so I can insert my threaded wood nuts because, you know, I want to make sure everything's serviceable. But in this process, you can clearly see the MDF starting to split against the rib nuts because I didn't drill a big enough hole. And in between the fibers, the MDF is weak. This later does cause it to break, but what I ended up doing was just filling all the cracks and, and holes with epoxy, coating the whole thing so it was nice and firm and had a lot to grip onto. So it's much stronger now, it's fixed.
right, so where am I at? Um, I went ahead and powder coated this hinge on the rear that I made. I've got it bolted up to the rear, and I say bolted, I mean it very literally because everything, you guys know how I am, it's, it's gotta be serviceable, right? The problem is with everything that everyone always does with, with center consoles and lids and stuff like that, is they just screw them in there with wood screws and they send them and they call it good. But the problem with that is, is that if you do that too many times, take it apart, put it together, whatever, or even over time, the holes are gonna get wallered out. Just how it is, right, with wood. So what I've done is literally everything I can on this center console, I've made with uh, wood nut inserts, so that way, if, uh, if I ever need to take this thing apart for upgrades or dismantle it for repair, stuff like that, I mean, like, shit happens. It's got wooden nut inserts, so everything in here is held together with bolts, essentially. So the hinge is put together on the rear. Obviously, the front hinge works pretty good, and, you know, part of, part of the benefit of doing your own powder coat is the fact that all this is powder coated by me. Didn't cost me a dime other than the powder. But the hinge works good. The hinge works really good. Now we gotta do one of two things. One thing I need to do is figure out how to create a latch for this so you can close it, right? So I've got, so I've got this little hinge here. I got one for the front and one for the back. Not a hinge, uh, a latch rather. And it just screws to the bottom of it and then you pull up on it, it pulls the latch back. So I have to figure out a way to not only put it on the bottom side of this, I wanna create a little handle for it on the top, uh, but I also need a place to where the latch can uh, clip onto, right? So we gotta design that, we gotta cut that out, we gotta mount it. So I'm just trying to figure out what the best way to go about doing that is, but I think the most important thing I need to do is cut out a space on the lid for like a hand to go into for like a handle. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Yeah. Okay, so how I'm gonna do this has actually changed a little bit. So instead of using the latch underneath, I think what I'd like to do is save as much room as possible for the grip. Um, and I actually have these quick release uh, hood pin style latches. And the way they work is actually very simple. I just have this like little pillar that's gonna stick up underneath it. And then this thing sticks down and clicks on top of it. Uh, it's nice and firm until you press that button, then it pops right off. So I'll just make this. Uh, and then a little metal latch that kind of comes out underneath this with the pole that sticks through it. So that way when you close it, it click, click, clicks. And then you'll just kind of boop and it'll pop right off. So that is, uh, that's how I'm gonna do that. So here is the original uh, test hinge that goes on the bottom side. And here's the modified one that I made so it can accommodate the pin for the latch. And yeah. This is it, now it's time to start doing the epoxy. I'm gonna use some of this painter's tape to cover the important holes that I don't want epoxy in, and then I'm gonna flip them over and just start pouring my base coat. I'm using West Systems Epoxy here. I've talked about it a lot in the past. I do not sponsored by them. I freaking wish I was, because it costs a fortune. But the system is super simple. It's got these one-to-one -one pump ratios. I mean, the pumps are, are smaller, so it's like a one pump to one pump ratio, not a capacity ratio. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna mix this up here in my bucket, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of black liquid dye. And this is gonna turn the epoxy black. This also being the base coat, I'm gonna get a little bit more experimental with it. I'm gonna add some acrylic powder, a little bit of gold, maybe a little bit of silver, a little bit of black onyx. That's just gonna add just a little bit of flake to this lid. So that way it's just not a solid black lid. It'll have a lot of flake to it, it'll be sparkly. My main goal with this is to make the lid so shiny and glossy 
that the Starlight Ceiling headliner reflects onto the lid and kind of looks like a double star effect. That's the idea, so let's hope that pans out. So the first coat is done. It is cured and dried. A lot of bubbles on the top surface. I, I anticipated that. And I also anticipated that the sides would not make a glass finish on the epoxy uh, the first time because that's the exposed grain and that's gonna absorb more than the flat MDF will or the, uh, the flat wood will. So I am going to sand this down a little bit, get it nice and scuffed uh, and apply a second coat. This, this will probably take three, maybe four coats. To, uh, to accomplish what I'm looking for here. All right, this is where it's gonna get boring. I apply maybe 10 layers of epoxy over this thing over the course of a couple of weeks because it's gotta dry for a full day before I can sand it, so I lose a lot of time on this process. But basically the process is pour a layer, sand it to where it can accept more epoxy, it can get in those cracks, pour another layer, and then just keep doing that over and over again. I did maybe, like I said, 10 to 12 layers, somewhere around that, and uh, I'm only gonna include a handful of them. It's There's no reason for you guys to watch that many, right? Like, I don't even wanna relive it. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna use the blowtorch to knock out a lot of the bubbles. We're starting to get closer to our final layer at this point, and I wanna make sure that we have as little bubbles as possible, as little imperfections as possible, in case we come across a perfect pour, and I'm like, this is good, we don't need to do anymore. Um, that doesn't happen for like another five pours, but that's fine. As you can see here though, we're starting to get a lot of like deeper flake as I experiment a little bit more with some of the acrylic powders. We're getting a much deeper and, and shiny look, and the pours are getting better and better. And as we get closer to our final pour, I start doing this technique. Uh, I basically just wrap a very flat piece of wood around a, a piece of sandpaper and hand sand it across the top. This is a body workers technique that I was shown maybe a decade ago. Uh, it really gets nice flat surfaces versus using like a palm sander. It's got a soft pad on it and it kind of conforms more to uh, whatever you're sanding. So you might be able to sand it kind of level, but doing this method, I've achieved much flatter surfaces.
Now that I'm extremely satisfied with the way the final couple of coats have gone, I'm gonna move on to clearing the main center console lid and filling this void with epoxy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind down all the drips in the middle and I'm gonna take a piece of wood covered in this uh, anti-sticky tape. I, I forget the name, obviously there'll be a link in the description, but basically like epoxy and stuff like that doesn't stick to this tape. It's really good for molding. You know, it's like mold tape, if you will. So I'm just gonna hot glue this to the back of this plate and that's where I'm gonna use as a trough to pour my epoxy. And when I'm done, it'll just pull right off. It won't be stuck to the epoxy. We all know what that looks like. All right, this is going to be the finishing touch of the center console lid for me. Something called a vault nut, which is essentially Odin's logo, if you will. I'll put a brief description up on the screen so you don't have to listen to me talk about it, but it's what I've decided to go with as the centerpiece of the center console lid. So I'm just gonna hang it, do a little bit of powder coating, and then get ready to cast this thing inside the center console lid. And we can only pour so much epoxy at one time before it starts to overheat and crack and do all sorts of problems. So I can only pour about an eighth of an inch at a time, which means that we still have about another eighth of an inch to pour. However, I'm gonna glass coat this entire lid. So I'm just gonna sand down the surface a little bit and then we'll pour our final clear coat over everything, making it look perfect. So it's really important that this get nice and flat for this last pour. All right, so the uh, the lid's epoxy is done. It's a little dirty because of all the uh, the sanding I've done on the bottom of it. But went ahead and sanded flat all the drips and whatnot, and uh, this looks really good. I'm very happy with this. I've put some some lights. Behind. You can actually, if you get down on it, you can really see the depth in the epoxy. I'm trying to wipe my fingerprints off of it, I suck. But very very happy with the way this has turned out. It's got a nice sheen and then this lights up very cool underneath here I'll show you guys that in a little bit show you guys off that in a little bit man that turned out so freaking pretty and uh, Yeah, so now what I need to do is uh, I need to cover the bottom of it So it doesn't look like wood anymore and I'm not gonna do that with epoxy because quite frankly, I'm I'm, I'm epoxied out. I'm, I'm good on epoxy for a little bit But I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a piece of metal that kind of covers this you know, just like a thin piece of, uh, of steel that covers this because we're going to put some lights behind here so we can light this up and uh, I want to cover that and make it look good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my little designer area and uh, design uh, a piece of metal that fits as good as I can along this while leaving a hole for the, uh, for the thing and then yeah. So cool, let's do that. All right, so I've got our two underlids ready to cut. So all I gotta do is head under the machine, they'll cut, and we should see if they fit. You know, I'm pretty sure my math is good, but hey, it's me, you never know. I 
I am about to start doing some of my first powder coating. Um, I have some brackets here that I've cut and bent with my CNC machine. Since I, uh, you know, I I made my my seat brackets down here, uh, I just decided I'd extend off of that. That sit underneath the uh, the seat, and then it just bolt on the outside of this. And I'm not worried about it being exposed on the outside because the seat goes there, so you will literally never see it. I've got these mounting brackets that mount um, this section of the lid to the inside of the lid. They just bolt in through here through some rib nuts on the inside of the lid. I also made this little metal piece that goes across the bottom of this. The hinge uh, comes up and hits that as a stopper. And I figured if it was gonna hit the wood a bunch, the wood would probably blow out. The epoxy would chip over time. So put a metal on metal action. I'll put some, some soft felt on there to make it more soft. And then I have our, our custom made hinge that I made. And uh, we're gonna powder coat that as well. I think this will be the biggest piece I've ever powder coated so far, technically, like dimension wise. And I don't think I'll be able to powder coat the two lid bottoms because they're so big they won't fit inside of my oven. It's just a conventional oven, as you guys know. So I might have to either go get those painted or go get them powder coated somewhere else. I do need a bigger powder coating oven. So if you guys want to like, you know, like this video, share this video, it helped me get a new one, a bigger one for the business kind of deal, rather than using that stupid little oven that I have. <laughs> And I don't want to really reveal all the secrets right here, but I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, dang, that doesn't look so good with the, uh, that underneath. I'm just going to put a piece of acrylic on the bottom side of this so it's nice and uh, clean and this will glow up too from the insides. So we're going to double use our glowing uh, RGB lights, which would be nice. Just got these out the oven. They look pretty good. Man, do they look pretty good? They look pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. They look pretty good. Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. Hey, 
Everybody, make sure you like and subscribe to Do It With Dan's YouTube channel. Bitch. <laughs> Flash. Whoa. Flash. Whoa. Bitches ain't shit. Hey, everybody, it's your boy. Uh, Do It With Dan. And today we're going to finish up the center console. So, yeah. Fuck shit, bitch. <laughs> bitch. Bitch. Have you been involved in an accident where you got hit or maybe you hit somebody? You know, insurance took you through a ride on that. You could be entitled to some money. Isn't that right, Jordan? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Jordan Wooten. I own Wooten Empire and Appraisals. I'm an appraiser. I do diminished value, do actual cash value, appraisals to combat other insurance companies' lower estimates. If you've been in an accident and you have the vehicle repaired and it's not a total loss, you're entitled to something called diminished value. You get in an accident, let's say I hit Dan I'm out in the parking lot, I drive into Dan. We're both entitled to diminished value reviews. An insurance company will make that offer after the vehicle is repaired and it will be a significantly lower offer than what you're entitled to. That's where I come in. I do a report that displays what the vehicle was worth before the accident happened and what the vehicle was worth after the accident, which could have been a, a $25 offer or a $0 offer or a $500 offer. My report could say $4,000, $8,000, $12,000, just depends on the year make and model. The best part about my report is what it comes with additionally, which is a guarantee. My guarantee states that if I I don't get you at least what the insurance company offered you, plus the fee that you pay me or more, I refund you 100% of the money. I either get you more money or I give you all of your money back. But Jordan, I've been in an accident in the last four years and I've already had insurance pay me for diminished value and it was only like 500 bucks. Am I screwed? No, you're, you're not screwed. So if you were in an accident four years ago, I'll review it. All the reviews of diminished value cases are free. I can still help you on diminished value, even though you've cashed that check. So most people think, oh, well, I, you know, they sent me a check. That's all I'm getting. That's it. No, that's not all you're getting. Additionally, you might have even sold the car. It's not yours anymore. It belongs to somebody else. You can go back and still get more money on that vehicle. That payment goes directly to you. You know, let's say it's $50,000. That 50 goes to you. I don't take Take a percent i don't take anything out of the payment one time no. fee i can't help you and at the end of it i do all the work i do the report and i still can't help you full refund whatever you pay me full refund jordan is a close personal friend of mine i trust him wholeheartedly this is literally what he does he helps people get money he's helped me out multiple times in my accidents if you guys use coupon code do it with dan at checkout or just let him know in the comment section that you saw him from my video he'll give you 25 bucks off of his appraisal price yep absolutely and it still comes with a hundred percent refundable guarantee yep. there's literally no downside to this i mean it's just money laying on the table for you it's in a drawer you didn't know about Most most people don't know about diminished value or what it is. Consider it a recommendation from a personal friend. He can hook you up with that. I guarantee it. Contact him. His information's in the description. It's going to be in the description of all my videos from now on. So I guarantee it. We I guarantee point. it. You want to do like a, a point of the camera and guarantee? Or just say it comes with a guarantee. It comes, it comes with, with a guarantee. guarantee.